Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Well, good morning, everybody. Today, I'm going on a wild goose chase. I'm meeting up with an old friend of mine whose name is George. Apparently, he was out at a garage sale the other day because, of course, my friends are also into buying and selling antiques. He was at a garage sale, and a guy had a pretty rare car, really neat car, um, and apparently, it might be for sale. So I'm gonna hop in the old bus this morning, go pick up George. We're gonna try and track it down. He doesn't really remember where it is, uh, but we're gonna try and retrace his steps from the other day. <laughs> Hopefully find this thing and who knows, maybe I'll be able to strike a deal. So come along on today's adventure as we go on a wild goose chase for an old car. I decided to uh, wait for George here at my old shop and you can see Twice Cream is there. Apparently they had a really busy day the other day, but look who managed to make their way. It's George. Hi. And you're uh, going for, uh, my, you're my inaugural passenger oh, in, thank you. in my quasi beat up Volkswagen. <laughs> it's in the midst of being less beat up. We're midway through <laughs> a video of trying to renovate this thing. But uh, you were what, out at a garage sale the other day? Yeah, we do a garage sale, um, not usually on Fridays and Saturdays. And um, we went a different way down this road and I spotted this vehicle and I thought, so we've got to go look at it. So we, we sort of doubled around, came back, and I got out and took a couple of pictures and went and knocked on the door and spoke to the guy very briefly. And then when I got home and posted the pictures to, to you, Alex, um, I suddenly thought, yeah, I should have maybe got the, the guy's phone number and his address. Well, never, let's go uh, do a did. little, we're going to go do some door knocking. Okay, you sounds good. For it? Okay. Sounds good. Let's go for a ride. On the prowl, somewhere up and down one of these streets is this little vehicle. We're gonna basically just do a little loop. Do I keep going straight? Keep on going. All right, we're gonna keep on going and hopefully this magical car will appear. Oh, oh you there. figured it out. I'll we we it had out. to release George from his shackles there. And look, he delivered. Look what George found the other day. It's a Citroen SM. This is a French bodied car with a Maserati engine, it's one of the most futuristic, funky, crazy looking vehicles. Um, and it looks to be all there. So apparently he knocked on the door the other day, behind these bushes, there's a, tree, a house there. We're gonna go knock on the door again and see if the fellow's home. If we were lucky the owner was home. See, it's got a cracked windshield, the dash is cracked. Sitting outside like this, he said it might be open, and it is. It's super funky. It's like space age, but the in, the interior is a little. Uh, it needs to be done. The seats are shot, front end back. The upholstery is kind of dro drooped down a bit, so it's definitely going to need interior. Gauges are all there. It's an automatic, which is kind of unusual. It's these random brake pedals, which I can't remember. I know that's fuel, and I the brake is like round, <laughs> and then you've got this emergency brake. It has a round brake dot that you compress with your foot rather than a proper pedal. Ah, uh, the French. It's an artistic design, though, and it is a very cool-looking vehicle. The paint's not terrible on it. It's faded, but not terrible. But yeah, this has a... Uh, this has a Maserati engine. Actually, we should maybe pop the hood, George. Make sure it's not a big hamster and a wheel in there. <laughs> what do you think that? Uh, should be, should be, well, <laughs> you would think it would be on the normal side. Probably that white lever right there. Does it pull or is it a button? It's, it's frozen. Okay, let's not force it without the owner here. It's kind of twisty. Okay. Well, let's, let's leave that as is. That might not be the release. We'll ask him. Look at the lines on this thing. You've got this sleek, you know, it's, it's like if Daft Punk had their own car, it would be this. 
but it's very low to the ground. It is but inches off the ground. It has a uh, pneumatic suspension. Anyway, it's a, it's a funky vehicle and it's a type of random thing that I'm kind of into. So I guess, uh, I guess I go and chat with him and see what he wants to do. So the plexi on the front is snapped and it looks like he uh, ran into something too as it's got this uh, smashed in section of the grill on the bottom. Leaves are blowing in. It's definitely a little forlorn. I mean, it's doable, but it needs a lot more than, a lot, needs a lot more than I thought. And that's without even hearing it run. So the legend of the Maserati powered Citroen sitting on the side of a road, somewhat abandoned, it was true, <laughs> as we found <laughs> out. Um, George and I were there, and George, he, what was I, the what was the inside of his garage? Um, he had I don't know eight or nine motorbikes. Um, it wasn't it was just bit, eight or nine motorbikes. It, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was a bit like um, an episode of American Pickers. Yeah, and I yeah. was I didn't film in there because he is a very private man. But I can tell you this much: um, he had um, Moto Guzzi's and Nortons and BMW motorcycles. He had, he had so many bikes that there were some in the yard that we couldn't even see because the grass was so tall. It's not that big of a backyard, but he said there was a sidecar and motorcycles back there and he couldn't even see where they were or point them out because it was like four foot tall grass. Um, there was all kinds of neat stuff in there. But uh, at the end of the day, I made an offer. I made, I think a fairly strong offer on, on the car, but I had to accommodate for the fact that it hasn't been running in a couple years. Um, it has some damage to the front end. Uh, he hit something with the with the low um, stance of the vehicle. He he damaged the grill, and that's going to be expensive to fix. So I made an offer on it. Uh, he's going to think about it, and uh, from my perspective, it doesn't matter if he says uh, yes or no. It's a cool thing that I think is worthy of saving, but I can't get too emotional about something like that. It's not like it's my dream car. It's a cool car, <laughs> um, but I think a good lead, perhaps. Yeah. It looked like lots of other things there for us to potentially pick. So um, I'm not leaving with the keys for a Maserati SM Citroen. I'm not leaving with the keys for one right now, but that might change in a day or two. But while we're out here, you want to go stop at that garage sale? Yeah, go on. Okay, we're going to go find stop at We're going to find a garage sale to stop that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was fun hanging out with George. I dropped him off back at the shop. I'm headed back home, and as of right now, um, we're just gonna basically wait and see if the fellow gets back in touch with me over the Citroen. Who knows? Um, I'm hoping this will be a positive update video and we'll have some kind of answer, but either way, it was fun to spend time with him. I've known George since I was a kid, so it's always great to get out and uh, go bomb around and do th some things. It's been about a week's time since uh, George and I went to go look at the uh, Citroen SM uh, that was not really for sale, but he said he'd consider selling it. And I, I've tried almost every day every couple days you know like leaving a message or trying to call and nobody picks up the phone well today i was sitting here uh waiting to get into the auction to sell some stuff and uh i figured oh, i'll give him a call sure enough he picks up the phone and i said you remember me i came by and looked at the car he said yep <laughs> and i said have you thought about the offer he said oh yeah that's fine so it's like i guess he made up his mind to sell the car to me so this morning i'm gonna go and uh, grab a bank draft and a bill of sale and we're gonna go get this thing signed up and hopefully back home um, later this afternoon. I'll have to call a deck truck to come and grab it. So exciting times. Um, it's a weird, unusual car. It'll, I don't know, my. it'll be a long-term project, but at least it'll be coming home hopefully today if all goes well. Well, the moment has arrived. Yeah, the car doesn't look half bad from here. It just doesn't look half great when you get up close to it. Really the body in the, paint and the chrome and everything is all good it's just the interior is a little baked and I don't know if it even runs 1972 see there's a piece of trim missing on the bottom there hopefully I have that somewhere it's gonna need a few little bits but it's not too bad <laughs> so a car like this drew the attention of my family what do you guys think it's really cool <laughs> Nikki likes it Steven I like it he likes it. Lot. My mom thinks it needs lots of work. <laughs> what did you do? What did I do? <laughs> Melissa looked at me and gave me, what look did you give me? Yeah. <laughs> she gave me that look. Oh, it's, it's, butt is weird. <laughs> she thinks it has a weird looking back end, but that's its charm is that it's, it's going to be one of the weirdest looking cars you'll ever see driving around. 
Yeah, my mom thinks it has a goofy face. It has, it has a face like well, if I wanted a normal car, I wouldn't have bought this. <laughs> it's it's spacey. Like it looks like Space 1999 dropped a French car on our driveway. <laughs> Steven is excited because it has a Maserati engine. And it's got the airbags. And it has an air ride suspension from factory. <laughs> boom, boom. I could play the lowrider song as I'm driving this. <laughs> I don't think it'll work quite like that, but it is adjustable for ride height, which um, would have been nice to have that operating offloading off the truck. Ah, it's just a funky thing. I think the first thing I'll probably want to do is polish it up and clean it and take all the junk out of the inside of it because it's looking a little forlorn right now. There's absolutely no shine to that paint, but I think I can make it shine again. The main problem with the body is right down here. My mom says it looked like it got into a bar fight and its tooth got knocked out. <laughs> she said, my tooth. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be a bit of a problem. I will have to take that grill off and, and mend any of the body work that's been damaged under there. Hopefully nothing too severely. Um, I guess I'll find out. Also this little plexiglass uh, piece that goes on the front. Well, I mean, I could probably find plexiglass and, and cut it myself but that little curved piece is damaged so a few tricky little bits but the body overall is is good which is a, a good start not being a rust bucket is a very good start the the bad part of course the interior the broken tooth on the grill <laughs> and all the other stuff i'll have to do well this is what's under the hood it's a maserati v6 and it's a little dusty and a little oily under here. These are the spheres, by the way, that control the ride height of the vehicle. I'm hoping that it'll all start to sort itself out. It's sitting, it's sitting on the stoppers right now, but maybe once they're pressurized, it'll come back up again. Either way, I'm gonna clean up under here a bit, try and blow out some of the leaves and some of the debris. This car was actually sitting for quite a number of years on the street there, as you could probably tell from uh, how high up the stuff had grown on the road. I'm actually surprised the city didn't tow it away sitting there for so long, but uh, all that said, time to make this engine look a little bit more sparkly. There, that's better. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I hate working on a dirty engine bay. It's all greasy and grimy and gross and if the car has leaks, you can't tell where it's coming from because there's oil all over the place. Anyway, it's a lot cleaner now, I'll let it dry. And on Monday, I've got a locksmith coming, hopefully to cut me some keys for the car, because I don't know if I mentioned it, I can't recall now, but um, he lost the keys. So that's a problem. <laughs> um, but while I'm waiting on that, I'm going to uh, try and put a charge on the battery. I, it's uh, 12 years old. Who knows if it'll hold the charge or not? Unlikely, but we'll see. So we'll let it dry off, see what uh, we can make of this weird little French car. I thought I would take the time to take the battery out. Now, to get the battery out, easily remove the terminals, and you'd think, oh, pull it up, but you can't, because there's all this stuff in the way. So you have to actually jack the car up, take the wheel off, take a plate off of the inner fender well, then the battery apparently will come out. I'm sure this will be the least frustrating thing I'll ever have to do on this car. I say with some sarcasm, but yeah, so I gotta jack the car up so I can get the battery out through some secret little hatch on the side. Being a 10 year old battery, I didn't know if it would hold a charge, it did not. Um, he said that it drove last two, three years ago. I thought maybe there was hope for it. There was no hope for it. So off must come the wheel. The hubcaps themselves are kind of unusual. You can see the bolts popping through but I don't think you'd want to get your wrench on there because you'd scrape up all that black paint. So the hubcap should come off, but you can't just take the hubcap off. You have to loosen this retaining bolt, which is holding the cap on, which is kind of ingenious. I don't know how many, if you've ever had an old car, sometimes you go around a corner and your hubcap flies off and you see it driving past you. So I guess that's one way of making sure they stay on there, but um, it's just an extra step, I guess, along the way to getting the wheel off. Well, I got the wheel off. That's a weird setup. <laughs> I mean, nothing should really surprise me at this point, but um, yeah, that was one, what was underneath. And I feel like I'm gonna have to clean the heck out of that. 
Ooh, that big spider in there. He said it had been a couple years since he's driven it. I'm guessing it's been more than a couple years. Maybe the last time that battery was put in, it could have been 10 years or so, because that's some pretty healthy gunk buildup on there and spiders and so forth. Anyway, I found the secret hatch. Thank goodness I was able to find a forum online because I, I had no idea how to get the battery out. I thought I was gonna have to take the lower valance off, but no, it's this right here. Unfortunately, the bolts are all different sizes. <laughs> So I'm gonna have to go figure out what size they are, but assuming that comes out, I should just be able to pivot and swivel that battery right out of there. Well, nothing like having to dismantle the front part of your vehicle just to change your battery. <laughs> Mind you, a lot of new cars aren't much better. Sometimes they're under the seat or in some kind of compartment, but there, Whew. it's out. Well, now I go get a new battery. Battery is in, covers back on, cleaned up under here a little bit, got the cobwebs, cobwebs, not the cobwebs, you know, the spider things, <laughs> cobwebs are gone, and I can put the wheel back on. I've decided today to start cleaning up the interior. Yes, I know I have to repulsive the seats, but that doesn't mean I can't clean the carpet. Take the mats out, clean those, took the door panel off because it was not held on by anything. None of the screws were in. And before I vacuumed the interior, I picked up any loose bits I could off the floor. And I believe those are, I think it was something like that on the door panel. And look, I found some extra script for the side, which I, I guess there must've been a parts car at one point. Um, but most importantly, where are they now? Ah, oh, here's one right at the bottom. You don't want to vacuum because, here it is. You might find that the little piece you need is right there. I guess it goes something like that. That's how the door panels held on and it was lying on the floor. I picked it up and thought, well, I might need that for later. And yes, I do. That's the uh, retainer clip for the screw. So you can screw right into that. I'm gonna find the other one as well. There should be, I guess, four of those. So uh, I should be able to get the door panel mounted, mounted on. The nice thing is it's super clean under that door panel. Not a speck of rust. That's all good. Hey, the problem was the car got left outside in the sun and it baked the interior. But frankly, I think this paint will shine up nicely and it's still in really good shape. There, one door panel back on properly. Now, what I couldn't find, what I don't know if I have, is this other chrome handle. I had two parts enough for the passenger side, but I don't see anywhere in the vehicle the other bit, so I might have to try and track one down, which might be problematic, considering there weren't a whole lot of these cars made, and it's not like a GM or a Ford where you can just, you know, phone up your local Napa and have something ordered in. That's going to be a matter of finding one in a scrapyard somewhere, so I'm going to have to start phoning around for that and see if I can track another one down. Maybe it's in the trunk somewhere. I will have another look for it, but I'm not super optimistic I have this piece for the other side, but at least I've got one side done. I've decided to crawl under the car and have a look at the grill. This is the damage I was a little bit worried about because um, he obviously hit something and it's got dangling bits hanging off here. Uh, I'm gonna try and remove it, but I'm mostly concerned of whether it did any structural damage. Okay, the top two bars weren't affected, but the rest sure was, look at this. Must've hit a curb or a little post or I don't know what he hit, but look how close that came to hitting the radiator luckily it didn't and it didn't hit the cross support either it just caused i wonder if i can even i might just be able to pull that right back out it caused um superficial damage so we've got a concave dent there we've got a big dent here but i've got to get this grill off first so i can see what i'm working with under here plus it doesn't look all that pretty right now with all these bent pieces on here mangled grill is off and luckily for me as suspected it did not hit any of the important stuff like the radiator the horn the pumps any of that stuff that could have been damaged wasn't so now it's a matter of getting this all popped out which i'll have to do tomorrow as the sun is coming down you can't tell it looks bright and blue but it's uh close to 9 p.m where i am look how nice it is at nine o'clock at night it's what it's like at nine o'clock at night over at my place so it's getting late. I am going to call it a night, but tomorrow I'm going to come out here. 
I'm gonna try and make that not so dented in anymore. See if I can get in from behind and pop that back out. AKA pound that thing back out. Same with the bottom there. Because I was able to find a replacement grill online. A used one, a decent used one. And uh, that'll be perfect. So I wanna make sure this is more or less good to go for when the new grill arrives. Before I go in today though, I wanna show you what I found. There was an original Citroen SM uh, dealership manual, which I'm sure will come in very handy. It's as thick as the Old Testament and probably as wrought with as many tales of woe and heartbreak. <laughs> uh, <coughs> probably written in Old Latin too. Anyway, um, this was a nice thing to have because I'm sure I'll need it. Uh, the other benefit was uh, taking the floor mats out and cleaning the floor. It's a little bit dirty, but there's no rust. There's no rust in the floorboards. Um, I feel like I picked a fairly solid vehicle. Also, these uh, A-pillars and stuff that are uh, showing some wear, actually not just showing some wear, they're missing the fabric off it. That would be fairly easy to reupholster if I can figure out, well, maybe with the use of the manual, figure out how to take those things off. Uh, there's also spares that, that the last person left behind too um, that are better. So I really just have to take these things off and... Uh, <laughs> you know, it's the nice thing about British cars. You know, they had the wood trim. You can just see the screws. You just pop the screws out. Same with North American. This, uh, I don't know if it's a pressure fit or what's going on. Anyway, I'll figure that out. Um, have not cleaned uh, much of the interior yet. I really just did the carpets because <coughs> they were nasty. And I'll probably do uh, all the trim work and detailing. I have to put that driver's door panel on properly. Do that tomorrow. But good progress for the first day. I've okay, been in my garage looking for my Meguiar's fine cut cleaner, number two. It's professional grade stuff. Um, I'm going to be using this to try and get rid of the dull paint. Well, not get rid of the paint. I want to make it shinier. <laughs> I'm not going to grind it down to bare metal. I want it shinier. Sometimes I wish I was sponsored by somebody like this because then, you know, you get your polish for free or whatever. But I've been using Meguiar's. Now it sounds like an ad. I've been using this stuff for a long time and I really do like their product. Um, let me show you what the paint looks like and let me show you why I'm doing what I'm doing. It'll be pretty obvious. Currently, this is what the paint looks like on the car. Now, I am feeling very confident that this paint's going to come back to a nice bright shine. Red is one of those colors that always fades out. There's a little bit of gloss left on the side, but the top of this, it's almost completely matte. You can't see anything. So, um, to see if it will do anything at all, I'm gonna put a little test splotch right about here and see how shiny I can make it just by hand and then I'll give you an idea of how this will look. And we'll polish out the whole thing. I might do half and half to be like, ooh, look, before and after. That might be more fun. Maybe I'll do that. I'll, let me do a little sample spot, see if this is gonna work, see if this is the right product, and then I'll tear into it with my with my polisher, with my power polisher. Is it the best? It might be, it's DeWalt. It's pretty good stuff. Let's give this a try. This is my little sample spot. You can see it's got a little bit of gloss here, but let me just do a little bit. Oxidization happens, the sun bakes it, sits out for a while, oh, look at that. Look at that. Just with like a quick little polish, that came up like a mirror. Uh, well, this could be a fun project. I'm hoping to make the whole car look like that. Okay, so I did that half, not done that half. I'm gonna take it off the tripod and show you. So for the first pass, and I must say, I'm not done polishing. That's just the first pass of the cleaning product. And then you put the polish and the wax and stuff on. So this is just the first go at it. But look, that reflection has returned. See, look, look at the difference there. Boop, nothing more 
Nothing more satisfying than seeing a car that's that dull become that shiny within a matter of seconds. So I basically have to do that to the whole car. And when I saw the car, I figured it must have been painted and then parked because they didn't put things like the washers back on for the window screen and things like that. And I'm hoping this ends up being a running vehicle. I was told it runs. I've not yet to start it yet because I don't have keys. That's a lot of yets. But anyway, you get what I mean. I haven't started it because um, he could not find the keys and I'm waiting for a locksmith to get keys. Anyway, I'm just keeping myself busy while I'm waiting for that to happen, making the car look nice. But I was thinking who would go to the trouble of painting a vehicle inside and out, making it look all spotless and clean, um, at least on the outside, if it wasn't a decent mechanical vehicle. So I'll hope that my hunch pays off here and this ends up being an okay car. Only time will tell. But in the meantime, I'm going to continue polishing out this hood. Look at that. Boom, boom, peekaboo <laughs> with my reflection. Uh, I'm going to continue polishing out this hood and try and make the whole thing as shiny as that one side. Well, I figured I could bring that paint back, but I'll be darned if this doesn't look like a brand new paint job. If you can kind of see the reflection or not. Hello. It's super shiny. I gave it a uh, bit of wax, Meguiar's Gold Class, after I polished it. And it is looking pretty sharp. From here, it, it could almost pass as a show car. Maybe not when you look at the interior, but look how good this paint is turning out. You really see the reflections on the roof. This was completely dull and matte before. And I'd say that's just about got the paint done, at least for now anyway. I can kind of move on to getting the uh, interior cleaned up a bit more. Eventually, like I said, I'll have to redo the seats, but you know, next step, I really want to get this thing running. And for that, I'm still waiting on keys. It's been a couple days since I mentioned the key thing. Uh, he found some key blanks. They were uh, three hours away, so we're waiting on them to get delivered, and then hopefully we'll be in luck. I have been hammering on the dented in part. As you can see, it's much better. It was caved in completely all the way to the rad. I've got it almost all the way out. And I've shaken loose all sorts of wonderful things like hornet's nests and leaves. Uh, even a screwdriver fell out of there. Some other problem somebody else had years ago. Anyway, I'm going to continue trying to get this last little bit of folded aluminum out. Or if you're in Europe, aluminium. And uh, straighten that out the best I can. And then I'll work on this side a bit. Because I can't stick a grill on here with it being all caved in. And I, do ha I did find a good replacement grill. It's on its way to me, hopefully soon. I want to get that fixed up before it arrives. I'm kind of excited today. I've been working all week on the car, got the dent out of the bottom, got it repainted, um, polished the car up and everything, but I still haven't been able to move it or do anything with it. In fact, this is where the tow truck dropped it, and I've done all this work to it while it's just been sitting here because uh, the locksmith is having a really hard time finding uh, the key blanks for the car. Now I ordered one online, it's gonna be here in a couple weeks, but I thought in the off chance, maybe the guy I bought it from found it or had them around. So I drove back to the place where I found the car. I talked to the previous owner and he said, no, I don't have the keys, I'm sorry, I don't know where they are. And I said, you must have like a, you know, like a junk drawer or like a coffee can full of keys or something. And he said, well, you're welcome to look. So anyway, we go in the house and he shows me a few house keys and I look over on his table and it's, there's a fair bit of stuff in there. But on one of the tables, there's a glass peanut butter jar and it's full of keys. So we dump it out and guess what? I found keys. Now they do say Citroen on them, so that's a good sign, but he has had one of these cars before. So I don't know that it's for this car, but we're gonna try. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna try is the door. And so far, nothing. Well, this will be a big disappointment if these aren't actually the keys. <laughs> it could be for the other car. Oh, what a, what a bummer this will be. I mean, I do have a locksmith lined up. It's just, we've been waiting and waiting and plus he's super expensive, so. Darn, I don't think these are the right keys after all. After all that, I think these are the keys for the other Citroen, darn it. Well, I was a little bit disappointed that the keys didn't work. However, my quest for keys continues because uh, a fellow that I know named Scott, who has a channel called Cold War Motors, 
actually bought the exact same type of vehicle off of the same guy, uh, but I think a couple years ago, and he was given keys. He's not tried the keys he has. I think he's got my keys and I think I have his. So I'm gonna head out there to Scott's place and see if I can't do a swap <laughs> Maybe get him the keys he needs for his car and hopefully I'll get the keys I need for mine. I'm uh, just waiting for Melissa. She's gonna join me on the trip and we're gonna head out and go uh, try and track down the keys for the car. Okay, got back from Scott's place and um, he had keys. I don't know if they're the right keys. I will say that the vehicle that he purchased, which is now sitting in his back field, um, he bought it as a parts car but it came from the same guy. The keys that were in the ignition of that car did not work. Um, the keys I had were actually for his car, so I'm hoping they were just swapped at some point. So let's try this again. First step, we'll see if the door key is for the door. If the door key works, hmm, door key does not work. I sure hope this isn't a repeat of earlier. Okay. I'm gonna get all the keys ready before I get in there, get them all ready. Okay, the key went in and look, it turned. But it's not starting. <laughs> I don't know if there's a technique to this, but it was the right key anyway. Uh, next up, I guess. Oh, you better turn the wipers off. The okay, wipers are off. Why aren't you starting? That was my right key though. I did so. Good news is I got the crack key. Uh, next step will be figure out how to start the car. Oh, you hear that? It's cranking. It's trying to turn over. Ooh, we're getting closer. Okay, try this again. Whoa, she runs. I can't believe it just started up. <laughs> I was all prepared to have to make with the quick start or put some fuel down the carburetor or something, but no, it actually started. <laughs> well, looky there, I've got a running, I don't know about driving, but I've got a running Citroen SM. That's a lot better than what I had earlier today. I have no idea how much gas is in this thing. <laughs> I don't know what works and what doesn't. I guess that's the next game I'll play is what works and what doesn't work. Okay. Oh, it's stalled. Let's see if I can get it going again. Okay, so far, wipers are working. I'll zoom out a little bit. Um, hazard lights work. Um, oh, I guess I should turn that off. There we go. It stalled on me again. Probably has really old gas in here. Signal lights are working. There's no radio, so I can't tell if the radio works. Do the power windows work? I've got, oh. I have a driver's side window trying to work. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Almost didn't want to go back up again. Go with passenger side, I got nothing. Okay, defroster, let's see, does the fan work? Fan works, and it blew the plague out of the vents at me. <laughs> oh, the important thing to try, I guess, to see if the uh, hydraulic suspension's working. It should be filled up now that the car is running. It should lift itself up a little bit. I'm gonna get out. Oh, gotta keep it running. Did it lift up a little bit? Look at that. It hoisted itself up about a half foot off the ground. So the hydraulics seem to be working. That's all good signs. Of course, on a rainy day. Well, today I learned a few things about the Citroen. One is that it runs. It actually sounds pretty decent. Uh, two, Scott has a heck of a lot of parts that I could possibly uh, scavenge for my car over there. I did order some of the pieces um, already that were missing off this car. Like there's supposed to be like a fender skirt. Well, I shouldn't say fender skirt, more like a, uh, a decorative chrome trim panel that goes along the bottom there. That was missing. I only had one of them, so I ordered those. Uh, the car does run, drive and stop, surprisingly. And um, 
he had his car since 2018. And that means that this car hasn't moved at least since 2018 because it didn't have keys. So it was off the road for a while. Uh, I'm gonna see how much gas I have in it and make you take it for an inaugural test drive around the block. I might just stay within pushing distance though because I don't wanna end up uh, <laughs> having this big lunk of a car stuck too far away. But uh, what a neat thing this is. This is the noise it makes when it's waiting for you to fasten your seatbelt. Do you hear that? I feel like the French were trying to summon the aliens like in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. <laughs> I still have no idea where the gas gauge is on this thing. Hopefully it's not just a light. That oh, there it is. Well, it's reading that it has a full tank. I don't know how true that is. A full tank of bad gas. It's going to run like garbage till I get that stuff out of it, but let's take it for a little drive. I've noticed about the car so far one is it drives like it's kind of on a bowl of jello it's a very soft very smooth ride uh, I can honestly say I've never driven anything close to it you know 64 Cadillac had a similar floaty kind of feel but not when you're braking it has this leveling sort of uh, braking system that makes you brake even it doesn't dip or fall also the steering wheel returns back to center on its own so you got to get used to that because it feels like it's taken over sometimes other than that, um, and the fact it's a kind of a weird car, this thing sat for at least five, six, seven years or more, and it started right up in a drove. So I can't say too many bad things about it, really. <laughs> uh, it is a fun feeling to be behind the wheel of it, though. So, <laughs> it's just such a wonderfully goofy, unusual car, I quite like it, I have to admit. You know, even though this one isn't in showroom condition, it's still a lot of fun. And you're not gonna find anything, I mean really anything that looks like this on the road, maybe other than another Citroen. But this thing is wild, let me tell you. The funny thing about this car is that this is what the French designers probably thought that the people of the year 2022 would be driving. <laughs> and you know, what we drive is probably vastly different than what they expected, but this was the car they imagined for the future. And here I am driving it as a classic. Other special features include this fancy lever that does this. Why, if you see a log in the middle of the road, why move the log? Simply turn your car into a monster truck <laughs> and drive over top of it. And when you're done and on the other side and you want to go at highway speed and cruising style, you lower it back down again and you've got yourself a highway cruiser. Like I said, inventive, unique, and unusual, this car is definitely the trifecta of oddities. Well, that's it for another episode today. The car is running, the car is driving, and that's a heck of a lot more than it was doing a few days ago. And on top of it, I didn't have the extra expense of getting the keys cut, so that worked out very well. Um, still a little bit more to do on the vehicle, such as replacing the cracked screen right there where the license plate goes and fixing the grill underneath. I have to put a new grill in. But really, other than that, it's cosmetic stuff, and that's the easy thing to do. The important thing is, mechanically, knock on wood it seems pretty good um so let's uh, i guess look forward to some more fun some more episodes with this thing and uh i'm hoping really hoping to get it out to its first car show this year even i'm trying to get it out for this weekend so we'll see if i can make that happen anyway guys thanks for watching another episode today we'll see you all soon and bye for now